Hello, hello, hello. It's Friday afternoon and I want to say thank you again to Marianne um, for having me speak. I'm super honored uh, once again <laughs> and um, I want to um, go ahead and pray before we get started and the music I have playing in the background, of course, I don't have rights to, but I love worship. Um, anyway, Father, I just thank you. I thank you for the honor and the privilege of being able to minister your word. I thank you for what you've placed in my heart. And I pray, Father, that my mouth would be used as a vessel for what you want to bring forth in this time. Bless everyone here, Father, that comes. I pray that we would all have ears to hear what the Spirit of the living God is saying. Holy Spirit, have your way in each one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Anyway, um, February, which is Valentine's Day, but um, Marianne told me that February is a month that they were talking about love. The topic was love. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to talk about the love of God, and I'm going to use a scripture that everybody is pretty familiar with. It's John 3, 16, and it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, anytime we read something in the Bible, it's just overwhelmingly amazing to me that you can read the same scripture a thousand times and it's always something different or God will always, um, you know, speak something different. And so for me, when I think about this scripture, for God so loved, he so loved that he gave and when I think about that <clears throat> and how he gave his only son, you know, I think, well, I don't know about anyone else, but when I think of giving up my son, let alone my only son or any child for that matter, I don't know if I could do that. Um, it would be hard for me as a mother to say, oh, hey, yeah, let me give you, you go ahead, give your life for all these strangers, all the generations that are coming. Because remember when Jesus came, it was over 2,000, over 2000 years ago. And, you know, it was for generations that he had not met, he had not known in the humanity. So within our fleshly bodies, we had not met. So basically, it was kind of like Jesus was coming to die for a bunch of strangers for generations to come. Yet, in Jeremiah 1, 5, it says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. So God knew all of us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit three in one, but they knew all of us because before we even came, before we were even conceived in our mother's wombs, heaven, the Godhead, <laughs> knew who we were. He knew our name. He knew that what we were predestined to do. So really, Jesus was coming for that reason, you know, to save, to give the final sacrifice so that we could live in heaven and have that family unit that God wanted so desperately, which is why he created Adam and Eve in the beginning. It was to have family. So that to me is the epitome of love. It's that God would actually have his son come in human form to die for us so that we could live eternally in heaven instead of hell. 
That is selfless, unconditional love of coming from a God that created the universe, coming from a father, he's our father, who really could create anything he wanted. He didn't need to have his son come and die for any of us because we were all of a sinful nature once Adam and Eve left the garden. But he wanted to redeem that because he loves each one of us that much. I mean, when I think in terms of what Jesus did on that cross and what he endured for us because he loved us, that just always brings tears to my eyes because no one else, family, friends, there would be no one else that would lay down their lives like that for us. But Jesus did. Jesus did. So for me, it's Jesus left us the perfect example of love, right? If you read everything Jesus did, he did out of love. When he healed the, you know, the lame, the blind, when he raised Lazarus from the dead, he did all of that out of love. And that should show us what unconditional love is. That should show us how to live in love, how to walk in love, in that same love that Jesus came and gave. Now, I guess, do we, when I think about that, I think about, do we, do I, for my own life, do I follow that pattern? You know, when I'm at work, when I'm at home, when I'm at the shopping center, you know, when someone cuts me off in traffic, I have a little bit of road rage there, but we won't get into that. <laughs> but, you know, do we in our daily lives reflect the love of God, reflect the love of Jesus? And there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, absolutely nothing that any of us can do that will separate us from that love. God will always love us. He loves the sinner, not the sin. And I think so many times we get mixed up and confused with, well, I did this, I did that. You know, I can't come to church. I can't get saved. I got to get my life in order first. Really come as you are because Jesus came to die for those who needed a savior, who needed the great physician. He didn't come for those that were healthy and think they have it all together. You come as you are and he loves you as you are. And then we just let the Holy Spirit do the rest. So realistically, we don't always feel like loving others. When someone hurts us, when, you know, we don't feel like loving them. I mean, when someone hurts me, I'm thinking, really? But love is a choice. And Jesus made that choice for us. So we, in turn, should make that choice for others. And, you know, it is, it, it, it really is a choice. It's not a feeling because feelings disappear. Feelings come and go. I can feel like I love you one minute and hate you the next because you say something wrong or, you know, oh yeah, I love you and turn around and rah, rah, rah. that's not the love of God. The love of God is unconditional. It doesn't expect anything in return. It just loves. That's pure love. That's unconditional, selfless love. Anyway, um, I have one more minute. <laughs> I want to res be respectful of the time. So um, I'll be speaking again on Friday the 26th at the same time, 5 p.m. And at that point, I'll be sharing a little bit about myself and my ministry um, just so that some of you can get to know me better and hopefully someday I'll get to see you all in person um, before I close in prayer though I do want to leave you with this final thought and this is something that has stuck with me 
it just it's it's just there it's just stuck with me but it's a good thing that it's there so i'll leave you with this and i want you to really think about it and ponder about it you will never ever ever look into the eyes of someone that god does not love so no matter who it is someone who wronged you someone who hurt you someone who hurt your family someone that you just don't like um you know it could be anything anyone there's so much going on in the world today and so much hate i want to say just you know but yet not one of the people that we see or come in contact with are really we can't say oh well you know god doesn't love them because they're look at what they did look at no there is never ever going to be someone's face that you look into someone's eyes that you look into that god does not love so remember he separates the sin from the sinner he always loves the sinner he just doesn't love the sin so whenever you look at someone think that think hey hmm, you know what god loves this person just as much as they love me i'm not so self-righteous that god loves me more than you or anyone else no god loves the murderer that's sitting in jail even though he hasn't repented why because god is a god of love that's it for me i'm going to close us in prayer i pray that you all were blessed and I look forward to coming back on again in two weeks. Father, I just thank you for this time. I thank you that we are so blessed to have you as our Lord, as our Savior. We are so blessed that you loved us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, who was willing to come and die so that we could spend eternity with you. Father, I pray that we would be those vessels as well, that we would carry the love of God in our heart and share it with others and i thank you father i thank you for boots camp ministries i pray god that you would bless this ministry above and beyond what they could think or imagine i thank you for marianne god bless her father move in her life in a mighty way i thank you that the peace of god is upon her life in jesus name in jesus name jesus 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 hallelujah all right, everyone, have a blessed, 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 blessed weekend. And thank you again, Marianne. Um, I will see you guys in a couple of weeks.